Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about uh, three January 6th defendants that have allegedly committed suicide. There are three that I know of that we're going to talk about, and the disgusting leftist reaction to this. I will show you some of the comments that have been made on a gab post I made about the man pictured here in the middle, Mark Angst, um, in his tragic passing and this the kind of sick celebration of these tragic deaths by a group that has dehumanized everybody that doesn't have their political opinions uh, while they parade around saying love is love bigot and proclaiming to be virtuous and calling everybody else hateful which is of course projection it is what these people do um <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and start with the post that i made on gab i said another january 6th defendant has committed suicide i want you to remember this remember matthew perna remember mark angst and i have a link here to an article that we will look at in a moment and um so there we'll, we'll talk about this gentleman also who passed away um let me see if I can find the responses, though. A lot of people are questioning um, if this was, uh, if they're really suicides or whatever. Um, let me see. Yeah, there just, there's a lot of responses to this, so, but I wanted to bring up, um, I wanted to bring up some of the disgusting replies to this that I saw recently. Um, yeah, like this one. May all J6ers suffer the same fate. It, it, they're just, you know, they're so nasty. They're so nasty. Um, let me see. Oh, gosh. But that's the kind of thing that they are they're saying they're like oh this is what happens to traitors you get what you deserve um it's just nonsense and what <sighs> unbelievable this kind of thing only youngsters naive fools and low iq entered the capital which are you like what are you talking about that's not true at all. A lot of people that arrived there didn't even know what was going on, you know, and uh, they saw the doors open and saw people going in there. You know what I'm saying? And of course, there's a lot of also um, other things, uh, other kinds of comments in here where people are just saying nasty stuff, which, of course, like, what do you expect? But these leftist comments are just really um disgusting you know and i i've seen other other comments um yeah we yeah like this one he is where he belongs six feet deep and there's tons of stuff like that like this the punishment for treason is death it, these people like you you understand that this is somebody's um somebody's child that that is somebody's parent you know that's it's so dehumanizing to say stuff like that and those comments are all over the place um it's just tragic you know absolutely tragic so the the leftists are yeah, hopefully a few hundred more follow his lead. They're celebrating and cheering for the fact that somebody like had committed suicide because they were so distraught. Um, it's just insane. Absolutely insane. While people like Baked Alaska, you know, they don't have to deal with anything. Um, you know, he was allowed to sit around at home yeah, it's just crazy. Just crazy. And so, you know, I think a lot of people are questioning 
this, right? Yeah, here's another one. Look at that. All January 6th prisoners are traitors. They should all follow Matthew's lead. Why would you say that about somebody? Like, why would you celebrate somebody passing away and taking their own life because they felt so desperate? You know, it that to me is just despicable. <laughs> And there's more comments like this. We don't need to go through all of this. There's tons of them, but there are also obviously a lot of people, you know, saying rest in peace um, and other things like that. Look at this. Look at that. I the, Yeah, saves the taxpayers money. Great. Now that is funny. Like, these people are so disgusting. It's just, it's heartbreaking, you know? Could you imagine being somebody's loved one and they, they try, your, your loved one, your father, your brother, your child tragically took their own life and you have these scumbags on the internet celebrating it and then saying other people should do it also. Here's the actual article. Pennsylvania man awaiting sentencing for entering the Capitol during January 6th riot has died. Has died. So they don't really want to talk about what happened here. A Lycoming County man awaiting sentencing for illegally entering the Capitol on January 6th has died. The death Wednesday of Mark R. Angst, 47, of South Williamsport was ruled a suicide. Coroner Charles E. Kessling Jr. said... Angst pleaded guilty Jan uh, June 27th in District of Columbia Federal Court to a charge of demonstrating or parading in a restricted building. His sentencing was scheduled for September 27th before Judge Reggie B. Walton. He could have been sentenced to up to six months in prison and fined $5,000. Angst and co-defendant Tammy A. Bronsberg, who pleaded guilty to the same charge, traveled by bus to Washington on January 6th for President Trump's Stop the Steal rally. They then joined others and marched to the Capitol. Assistant U.S. Attorney Mona First said the prosecution had evidence showing Angst and Bronsberg entering the Capitol through the Senate fire door by the Parliamentarian office at approximately 2.45 p.m. and leaving 30 seconds later. 20 minutes later, they re-entered the building through the Senate wing door and took photographs and videos on their cell phones as they walked through the Capitol and into Senate Room 145. Bronsberg later posted a video she took in the Capitol on Facebook, and when Onks returned to the bus, she showed others his pictures, said first. So they literally just, like, wandered around taking pictures. Like, they didn't do anything violent. It's crazy. Neither assaulted a police officer nor stole or damaged government property, the prosecutor had said in a previous court filing. Onks to gas field... Well-service technician is survived by his mother, a daughter, and three siblings. So he has a daughter he left behind. He has three siblings. His mother had to bury her son. You understand how sad this is. And what what's happening is a lot of these people are being brainwashed to think that they deserve to die. They're being told that what they did was so awful. You know what I'm saying? that like they that they deserve death and that's just despicable and it's quite frankly not true just blows my mind okay banker 53 who shot himself in the chest after arrest at capitol riot was a dedicated family man who loved his daughter's friend says Christopher Stanton, Georgia, 53, was found dead at his home in Alpharetta. His wife called 911 Saturday, telling authorities there was blood everywhere. Georgia's body was found in the basement. The cause of death was suicide. Who, who does that by shooting themselves in the chest? That is absolutely bizarre. Uh, officers also removed two semi-automatic SKS rifles from Georgia's home. He worked as a regional portfolio manager at BB&T Bank online record show. He was a man who loved his family and his daughters dearly, one friend said. Georgia had been charged with attempting to enter certain property, that is, the U.S. Capitol grounds against the will of police. 
He was out in violation of a 6 p.m. curfew and arrested after refusing to leave. Unlawful entry is a misdemeanor charge that carries a maximum penalty of up to 180 days in jail and fines of up to $1,000. Do you know Christopher? The Georgia banker who killed himself after being arrested at the Capitol Hill siege. Oh, it was a siege, please. In Washington, D.C. last week has been described by one friend as a dedicated family man. Christopher Stanton, Georgia, 53, shot himself dead at his home in Alpharetta on Saturday morning. The father of two was found with a gunshot wound to the chest and died by suicide. The Fulton County Medical Examiner confirmed Tuesday. High school friend Ashley Gunnan told DailyMail.com Wednesday, quote, I am deeply saddened by his death. I hope he can be remembered as the man who loved his family and his daughters dearly. The Chris I knew was nothing like what they've been watching out of D.C. on TV for a week. Nothing. He loved his family and his daughters. Georgia worked as a regional portfolio manager at bb and Bank online record show. Um... Documents obtained exclusively by Daily Mail Tuesday had shown Georgia's wife called 911 Saturday morning, telling authorities there was blood everywhere. His body was found in the basement of the home they share. Family members on the scene were described by police as extremely distressed in a police report. You think? Come on. Officers also removed two semi-automatic SKS rifles from Georgia's home. I don't know why. According to documents from the Superior Court of D.C., Georgia had been charged with attempting to enter certain property, that is, the U.S. Capitol grounds against the will of Capitol Police. You can see him photographed there with his child, who now doesn't have a father. This is so disgusting. It is so despicable. At around 7.15 p.m. last Wednesday on the night of the riots, Georgia was reportedly among a group outside in violation of the district's 6 p.m. curfew that had put, been put in place earlier that day to stem the chaos wreaked by a pro-Trump mob. Okay, Daily Mail. When officers gave the group several warnings to disperse, Georgia and his group reportedly refused, according to the documents. They were then placed under arrest as a result. Unlawful entry is a misdemeanor charge that carries a maximum penalty of 180 days in jail and a $1,000 fine. The attack on the cap- yeah, the attack, okay, happened as a members of Congress met to certify Joe Biden's electoral college victory. This is the Daily Mail's characterization of what occurred. So far, at least 82 people have been, well, now it's more like almost a thousand. Hundreds more are being hunted, but are yet to be found. <laughs> Disgusting. These people make me sick. Oh, and then they lie about what happened to uh, Officer Sicknick. This is not, he did not die from injuries sustained. That's not true. He died of natural causes. He had a heart attack or something like that. He had a, a previous medical condition. They lied about him being bludgeoned to death with a fire extinguisher. And then they never corrected that story. It's disgusting. The tragic story of Matthew Perna, January 6th Capitol protester commits suicide while awaiting sentencing. This is up on my sub stack. Um... If you were to ask the average conservative or the average American citizen who Matthew Perna is, most likely you would be met with a confused look and a shrugged, I don't know, and that is tragic. Matthew's story perfectly encapsulates the injustice of the Biden administration's witch hunt and political persecution of Americans who attended a rally on January 6th and since have been subjected to horrific treatment at the hands of an out-of-control FBI and federal government. While awaiting sentencing, after having his heart broken and his spirit crushed, Matthew reportedly committed suicide February 25th, 2022. The news of his passing was confirmed by his family and an obituary. At the time he took his life, Matthew was only 37 years old. He was from Sharpsville, Pennsylvania, and he attended Penn State University. At one point, Mr. Perna lived in Thailand and South Korea. While working as an English teacher, he loved to travel and traveled in Europe, Asia, South America, India, and across America, his homeland. Matthew loved people and he loved helping and teaching. He went on a mission trip to Haiti and he loved animals, especially dogs. He was always eager to meet new people, make new friends, and bond with others. He enjoyed trying different foods and learning about different cultures.
years throughout his studies and travels. Matthew was an avid runner. He enjoyed long distance running and even won several medals. He loved music and had an extensive library. He held a special bond with his grandfather who had passed away. Just so sad. Marjorie Taylor Greene, one of the few representatives who has spoken out about the treatment of January 6th pretrial detainees, posted about Matthew's passing in a thread on Twitter. Matthew was a Christian who read the Bible almost daily. He played the piano and saxophone and embraced people from all backgrounds and walks of life. On January 6th, Matthew Perna drove to, the, to Washington, D.C. to, quote, peacefully stand up for his beliefs, unquote, attending the Capitol rally. According to Perna and his family, his goal was to exercise his rights as an American, show solidarity for President Trump, and express his concerns about potential electoral misconduct. According to author and journalist Julie Kelly, who has followed the January 6th cases very closely. After Trump's speech, Mr. Perna, wearing a MAGA sweater, marched to Capitol Hill. He ended up walking through an already open door on the Senate side of the building shortly before 3 p.m. Eastern. We have now learned after the release of countless videos from that day, Capitol Police stood by, allowing people into the building, at times literally waving them in. Matthew Perna was not violent. He did not assault anyone or damage any property or steal anything. He simply walked through an open door, meandered around the Capitol for 15 to 20 minutes and then exited the building. That was his big crime. Upon learning the FBI was looking for him, Mr. Perna turned himself in and spoke to the FBI attempting to do the right thing. He made the mistake of thinking that the FBI was reasonable, and I do not think he understood the gravity of the situation. Mr. Perna was caught up in what the Justice Department called a shock and awe campaign designed to neutralize dissent and scare people from protesting at Biden's inauguration, according to DOJ official Michael Sherwin. Perna was hit with a slew of charges, including a felony charge, one obstruction of an official proceeding and aiding and abetting, two entering and remaining in a restricted building or grounds, three disorderly and disruptive conduct in a restricted building or ground, and four disorderly conduct in a Capitol building by simply walking around meandering in and then leaving. That's now apparently disorderly conduct. Shortly after his call with the FBI, where he agreed to voluntarily submit to questioning, that was his other mistake, his nightmare began. By the end of January 2021, he was arrested at his home by no fewer than six federal agents. In my humble opinion, he was not given proper legal advice. His lawyer advised him to plead guilty to all four of the charges against him. Mr. Perna had no criminal record or history. He was a good man, and he assumed he would be given a light sentence. That is not what happened, though, because the federal government wanted to make an example of every single January 6th defendant, regardless of the individual merits of their case. You U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves sought a lengthy prison sentence for Mr. Perna following his guilty plea, seeking as much as 57 to 71 months in prison for literally doing nothing, for walking inside for a couple minutes and then leaving. The DOJ has made absurd claims and allegations from the outset, characterizing January 6th as a so-called insurrection, despite no one being charged with that. They described attendees as, quote, white supremacists, quote, neo-Nazis, and, quote, seditionists, and, quote, domestic terrorists, despite not being able to charge anyone with domestic terror for lack of meeting the legal threshold to support that. The government has pursued draconian pretrial detention for nonviolent first-time offenders and have repeatedly requested delays in trials, claiming discovery is too voluminous and that they are not ready. This was so they could hold people in jail in horrific and abusive conditions as long as possible. I believe they did this to get people to take plea deals and to break, but also to control the narrative in the meanwhile to taint the D.C. jury pool against these people. After more than a year of this relentless and cruel abuse by the legal system and federal government, as well as the smear campaign by a gleeful and complicit mainstream media, Matthew lost friends, his standing in the community, and it broke his heart. He saw no other way out than to end his own life. I met for a few hours today with Jerry Perna, Matthew's aunt. We talked about the outpouring of love and hate from people across the world about what happened to her beloved and innocent nephew. Here is a letter from one of the detainees in of the D.C. Gulag. He died of a broken heart. Dearest Kimberly, oh, what a rough month March has been. On the first, we read aloud Matthew Perno's obituary and sang the anthem with a moment of silence at the end. His passing was very unwelcome news and gave 
us an opportunity for reflection. Are we the lucky ones, lucky to have been jailed over a year, become comfortable with the idea of losing it all, and lucky to have our names dragged through the mud? Are we lucky to at least have each other and the support of people like you on the outside? Yeah, that's another interesting point. One of the other January 6 detainees, Kyle, wrote a letter and drew a picture of Matthew Perna after the news of his tragic passing. Um, Tucker Carlson interviewed the aunt of uh, Matthew Perna. We can't play all of it, obviously, but we'll play a couple seconds here. Well, Matthew Perna walked into the Capitol building through an open door on January 6, 2021. He didn't damage any property. He assaulted no one. When he learned the FBI was looking for him later, he turned himself in immediately. He was a law-abiding patriotic man. The Biden administration then tried to destroy his life. They charged him with crimes that would have sent him to prison for many years. Many of his friends, some of his relatives even disowned him. And in the end, Matt Perna killed himself. Yeah, it's tragic. You cannot imagine what something, what that's like. And just consider also the fact that we had in 2020 leftists outside of the White House trying to burn down the White House, rioting, destroying property. They burned down a guard tower. Why weren't they charged with any of these crimes? We had them storm the, the building during the Kavanaugh hearings. They were disrupting an official proceeding. Do you understand that there's a two-tiered system of justice and it's applied unevenly? We had them disrupting the inauguration of Trump in 2017. There is video all over of Antifa smashing up buildings, burning cars, lighting them on fire, um, trying to attack people that were trying to get in and attend the inauguration. None of those people have been charged with any anything like what the January 6th defendants are being charged with. Were they not attempting to overthrow our democracy, quote unquote, uh, in the words of these people? Yeah, where where was the website Sedition Hunters looking for them? Wasn't that a seditious conspiracy? I mean, it certainly seemed like it. So here is his aunt. Attorney told us was a week before Matt's sentencing hearing on March the 3rd. Um, his attorney told Matt called his attorney and his attorney said that um, they're going to delay the sentencing hearing again because they're looking to add additional infractions. And um, we weren't exactly sure what that meant. We thought, was that a charge? And they said, no, it's not a charge. They're just going to try to influence the judge at the very last minute. Yeah, this is what they do. Um, this is what the Biden administration has been doing in their relentless pursuit to destroy the lives of every single person who showed up on January 6th and made the mistake of meandering inside a building for a couple of minutes. They are, um, it's just unlike anything I've ever seen before. And I think that what we're really seeing is the gearing up and the preparation for something that the Biden administration has called the new war on domestic terrorism, meaning that anybody that disagrees with the establishment, and that's on both sides, by the way, not just the left, but they're, they're working together. It's a uniparty establishment. You have two wings of the same bird. Anyone that goes against the establishment, the uniparty, uh, is going to be um, persecuted. And I'm working on a very big story right now that's going to look at what is happening and how this is being conducted um, and what could be considered a legal gray zone. So um, look forward for that. That should be coming out soon. I want to take my time with that story, though, because there are so many different angles and pieces I have to pull together. Um, filing a FOIA request regarding certain things that I have learned that are very disturbing. So yeah, this is just tragic. We found later that that in, the enhancement, not infraction, enhancements were actually going to add eight points to his scale. Like he was at a 14, they were gonna add eight points and that would have bumped him up to 51 to 72 months in jail for a nonviolent crime of walking into the Capitol, not touching anything, not breaking anything, not stealing anything, and no altercations with police. Walking into the people's house. The and people's house. And he was house. going to do more than four years in prison for that. Exactly. And um, 
We're not sure if Matt knew how many months were going to be added to his potential six to 12 months is what his attorney kept saying. Um, but that Friday evening, Matt hung himself in his garage. It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. You know, my goodness. Here she is speaking again. Matt walked through an open door. He did not break any barriers. He walked in while Capitol Police officers stood to the side. He entered almost 45 minutes after Congress had already left the building. Jerry Perna. I am Matthew Perna's aunt. His obituary, which went viral, was written by me because I wanted to make sure that at least one honest article was written about him after over a year of the media printing lies and spreading false information about him and the events that took place on January the 6th, 2021. Although Matthew Perna may have taken his last breath on February 25th, his death began in January 2021 after he was arrested and a nightmare like no other began. It affected everyone in our family, but we stood by his side proudly. Matt walked through an open door into this Capitol building, a monument that has been called the People's House. Standing here in front of this building does not give me a sense of pride, but instead is replaced with a feeling of shame. He did not break through any barriers. He walked in while Capitol Police officers stood to the side. If he was not permitted inside the building, why did they stop him and others like him and turn them away? Exactly. He chanted USA, USA, as he recorded with his cell phone, making sure to stay within the velvet ropes. He was one of those people that stayed inside the velvet ropes. He may not even have been aware that he was entering a restricted building because at at some point, by the time new people were arriving to the area, the doors were already open and police officers were just standing there. Sometimes they were waving people into the building. So he might have thought that it was okay for him to go in there to stay inside the velvet ropes. You know, as, as officers just stood there and didn't tell him like, hey, you can't be here. You shouldn't be here. They didn't say that to him. Why? He harmed no one. He broke nothing. He stole nothing. He entered the Capitol almost 45 minutes after Congress had adjourned and evacuated. Yet he was charged with obstruction of Congress, a felony that drastically escalated the seriousness of his situation. The January 6th protesters were hunted down like dogs and arrested. This same urgency for justice never existed before. The violent protests in our cities in 2020 resulted in far more damage and injury, all in the name of social injustice, which went completely unpunished. When yeah, exactly. When Matt found out that his picture was on the FBI site, he wasted no time in turning himself in. He contacted the local FBI office first. Matt was polite and respectful. He told them exactly what happened and left nothing out. That is so sad, too, that this was a guy that was like, he literally wanted to be doing the right thing. I mean, I can imagine in his mind, he was thinking, well, I just stayed inside the velvet ropes. I didn't do anything violent. It'll be fine for me to talk to the FBI and tell them the truth. There, Like he did not, I don't think he understood what was coming, you know, and how he was going to be treated. They returned a week later and they arrested him on misdemeanor charges. In the meantime, we retained an attorney who assured Matt repeatedly, don't worry, I've got this. The local Another comment here about this lawyer, uh, they should be sued for malpractice. What an injustice. The newspaper spent every chance they had printing false articles about Matt and social media was even more brutal. When the Department of Justice added the felony charge of obstruction to 270 protesters, his attorney still insisted he need not worry. 
But worry is all Matt did. Matt himself, before this event, had never had so much as a parking ticket to his name and now was being accused of a felony. He lost income. He lost his friendships. He lost his standing in his community. But we stood by Matt as his family because we knew him. When he eventually pleaded guilty, after several attempts of having the felony charges dropped, people asked him, why on earth would you plead guilty if you know you're not guilty of a crime? The answer was easy. Matt had become a for the former shell of his former self. Worry, anxiety, stress had worn him down. He suffered constant nightmares and began throwing up blood. He was no longer comfortable leaving his home. One setback after another took its toll on him and he just wanted it to be over. His attorney encouraged him to plead guilty. Oh yeah. By telling him that he would not receive a fair trial in this town. Now there is a, a point to be made about that though. I mean, the attorney was right. He wouldn't receive a fair trial in Washington, DC. Um, it has taken them only hours to convict people guilty. Every single January 6th defendant that has been tried in DC has been found guilty of it by DC jury because DC is 90% Democrat guys. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about justice. They either work for the federal government or they're contractors for the federal government or they have family members who do. They're incredibly ideological. They want to punish people and hurt them. They do not care about the individual facts of the cases. That is why they should not be being tried in D.C., but in their local jurisdictions where these people live. That would be a jury of their actual peers, not a jury uh, a jury of elitists in Washington, D.C. That is not a jury of your peers. This is wrong. And that he was not strong enough to stand trial. He was prepared to take his punishment. This is so sad, guys. And eventually build his life back. But those responsible took that hope away as well. When his sentencing hearing was delayed, and his attorney told him they were seeking to add additional infractions at the last minute. Matt's father wrote a heartfelt letter pleading to Justice John D. Bates, asking lenience for his son. He told him that Matt was his caregiver as he suffers from a serious illness, but the letter had no impact whatsoever because they don't care. This is the thing. They have so dehumanized their political opposition that there's no, their hearts are so hard. They don't, none of this means anything to them. They have no empathy for anybody. They seek to destroy people. They, they wish to, they celebrate their deaths. That, as I showed you guys, they celebrate this. So Matt took the only way out that he knew. Matthew Perna hung himself in his garage. The hatred that has been fueled by many members of our government, including Congress, our Justice Department, and even our President, has brought our country to the point of no return. My brother has received hateful letters in the mail and online telling him that Matthew deserved what he got. Social media continues to fuel this flame as well. Right now, our country is focused on the Ukraine and Russia, while our very own Americans are rotting away in jail for exercising their freedom of speech. Americans have died defending their right to free speech in this country, the land of the free and the home of the brave, while that country no longer exists. I agreed to come to this press conference today because I do not want Matthew Perna's name forgotten. There are hundreds of other people just like him standing in his shoes. I do not know how much more they can take. Still, I promise you that if something is not done to stop this evil torture that is being afflicted upon these people who have not even been convicted of a crime, 
more are going to make the choice that Matthew Perna made. She was right. This is not a Democrat or Republican issue. This is an issue of human. She was right. Yeah, Moore did make that choice because they saw no other options. Democrat or Republican issue. This is an issue of humanity. Most of our congressmen and women have remained silent. It is harmful to their careers to speak out about the treatment of the January 6 protesters. God forbid they should lose votes. Meanwhile, my brother lost his son. Most refuse to publicly address this complete overreach of power and manipulation of our nation's laws. Their silence speaks volumes. Shame on everyone who has a voice and could have intervened. Maybe this tragedy would never have occurred. We are disappointed and angry, and we are seeking justice for Matthew Perna. I stand here only today because my nephew is dead. No one cared about Matthew Perna's sufferings at the hands of this Justice Department when he was alive. And now it is too late to help him. But anyone who knew Matt would say that he would want others to receive the help that he himself was denied. We know, our family knows Matt is in heaven right now. He's finally free. But the people responsible for this tragedy they will stand before God someday for the part they played. But there is an evil surrounding these same people. And I do not think that they are hoping to enter the gates of heaven anyway. Thank you for your time. She's right. I don't think they are either. There was um, a poem published... Uh, I think this was in the Epic Times. Yeah, following Matthew's death. In a normal country, Matthew would have faced at most a couple months probation for his crime of walking into a building for 20 minutes and then exiting peacefully. Perhaps he should have been given a small fine and a few hours of community service if that. The Biden administration announced a new war on domestic terror, and this is the true ugly face of it. This is what it looks like, the most powerful government in the world, turning their eyes inward against their own citizens and using their power to persecute and smear those who dissent. Matthew was a good man, a God-fearing patriot who spent his life trying to help educate others and spread love. His life was brought to a depressing, heartbreaking, soul-crushing end. Meanwhile, those who spent the summer of 2020 rioting as part of BLM and Antifa groups and events, who looted and committed random acts of arson and violence, some of which resulted in severe injuries and death, are praised by the same establishment and given preferential treatment. As I type this, and as you read it, there are still many January 6 political prisoners languishing inside the D.C. Gulag or in a jail cell where they have been for over a year suffering medical mistreatment and neglect, lack of proper nutrition, and psychological as well as physical abuse. Many are being denied the ability to view the evidence that will be used against them. Many are confined in isolation and lack proper legal representation. The media continues to malign and smear these individuals. Sadly, Matthew's name will remain forever tarnished even after his death. You can make sure what happened to Matthew doesn't ha happen again by helping to share his story and contacting your representatives and demanding they take action and end this unconstitutional oppression of American citizens. And the fact that this is continuing to happen, that another January 6th defendant just took his own life a couple days ago, that should tell you that nothing is being done. I wrote this article back in April. Matthew took his life in February. Um, uh, Christopher took his life um, shortly after Matthew Perna. This is unimaginable. It's tragic. It's heartbreaking. And it seems like nobody cares. And no one's willing to do anything about it. None of the Republican representatives 
none of them care they don't give it they don't give a damn they might briefly mention it when they are trying to grift and fundraise but other than that they are not lifting a finger to help these people it is awful it's disgusting it is shameful and unfortunately i fear that it is only the beginning and i fear that it will get a lot worse so we need to remember these folks we need to remember what they went through we need to remember their names we need to make sure that this doesn't happen again and unfortunately it looks like nobody's coming to help us and that we are going to be the only people that continue to remember these folks and not let the story die and um as tragic as it is I think it's very illustrative of what we can look forward to in the future if the left continues to gain power. They're just, they're not going to stop. They will not stop. They're going to continue. They celebrate these tragic deaths. They say it's a good thing. And they say that other political prisoners should be doing the same thing. Remember that. Never, ever forget it.